Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, listen, the Lord have said it is time. Not time as you think. Not you trying to do something now. He's saying it is time for him to step in. Praise God. Oh, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Hey, when God says it's time, it's time for you to begin to really receive your daily bread. Join me right now in faith as we declare, say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Miracles are taking place in your life. Yeah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, Boshi, Bredekesha. I want to read a scripture to you, Psalm 110, Psalm 110, 110. Psalm 110 and verse 2. Psalm 110 and verse 2. It says, The Lord shall send the rod of strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Let me read this from the Amplified Version. It says, The Lord will send forth from Zion the scepter of your strength. Rule then in the midst of your foes. Oh, many of us don't understand this scripture. Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. I have, I have been telling you since Monday that there is an alignment taking place in this month of May. And the alignment is such that Zion is being exalted by God. And Zion is being made to manifest on the earth. See that now? Now that's an alignment. I remember telling you yesterday that I think you're believing God for. You're going to see the kind of manifestation that you'll be amazed this month. See, not what you are expecting per se. It shall be beyond, far beyond your expectation. Because it's coming with so much beauty and perfection. More like a, a blessing that is tailor-made for you. You know how it is when you're, ah, I don't want to miss this opportunity, I don't want to miss this opportunity. And then you realize that I can't, there is no way I can miss the opportunity. Because... It looks like that thing was made with my name on it because every other person that tried to go get it before me was rejected. Until I showed up, I'm like, oh yeah, aha. Uh -huh. Have you been here before? No, sir. Are you sure? Do you know someone? No, sir. Nah. But it's like, we've, we've had you like, yeah, it was tailor made for you. Now that's the kind of perfection so someone is looking for rest and they can never find rest until they meet you. That's the perfection. And then the moment they meet you, like, oh, where have we been all this while? Praise God. Oh, yes. That's the perfection we are talking about. So God is coming out. He's rising. Now here he says, the Lord will send forth from Zion the scepter of of your strength. Now, when he speaks of scepter, he's speaking of rulership. See that now? He's speaking of authority. So the Lord is saying, hey, now I'm releasing the scepter from Zion. Take note of that. I'm releasing the scepter from Zion. Then he says, you, and it's a command, rule in the midst of your enemies. Now, when he says rule in the midst of your enemies, what's he talking about? It's not just talking about people who are directly against you. That's part of it. But then he's talking about people who have 
who have withstood desire. People who feel they own the system, you know, they own the world, they own. Now, when it comes to fiscal rulership, the same thing. You, 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 you don't even come here. You don't come close. You don't qualify. But hey, God is sending a scepter out of Zion. Mm. Now that's deep. That's deep. So when, when the manifestations begin, when the shiftings begin, you should begin to understand that this is not political. Nah. You see, we have our political system. So we have, uh, we, we just had an election in, in Nigeria in the month of February. And now this is the month for swearing in. And now everybody is watching and saying, okay, so May 29th, there's going to be swearing in. Now here is this. When God rises from Zion, he's not going to recognize whether there's been an election or there's not been an election. He doesn't recognize that. Now, before the election, now I, I want you to understand something. So you see uh, prophets prophesying and say, this is the one who's going to win. This is the one who's going to win. And like, oh, wow. And everybody's okay. So let's watch and see what the election result is going to produce. And so someone said, ah, that was a false prophet. Oh, this one said this person won. The person won. This is the true prophet. Now, all those things, all those prophecies are prophets that are based on this world. Yes. You know, I was, I was fellowshipping with the Lord one time and then the Lord spoke to me and said, pray. And when God tells you to pray, better pray. He said, pray. Now, oh, mm. you see, when you know the Lord enough, you will begin to understand when the Lord is advising you how to deal with the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes one would say this is always wondering. So, you heard a voice. The Lord was necessary. So the Lord was telling me to pray. Uh, the Lord is telling me to pray to who? It may look confusing, but when you're matured in the things of God and in things of the Spirit, you begin to understand. Just like you know, um, David said, "My Lord said." The Lord said to my Lord. So who's the Lord? Who's my Lord? See that now. So let me just go. On. So the Lord said to me. He says, "Pray." That the Lord doesn't answer you from the place of darkness. I thought about this for weeks. Pray that the Lord, he didn't even say pray that I don't understand. That's how I said, say pray that the Lord doesn't answer you from darkness. Wow, what a place to be. That God will answer you from darkness. Do you know what that means? Now, now I, I got an understanding from, from, from the Lord concerning that. Do you know what that means? If I go before the Lord and I put two options before him, Lord, between A and B, please help me select which one I should follow. Now, what if A and B are both in darkness? And the Lord looks at me. I say, if I tell you, what is in my mind, you will not be able to handle it. Okay, you know what? Go with A or go with B. Oh, wow. Then I go with B. And then eventually, B may succeed for a while. And then B now fails. What do I mean B fails? B is now not serving the purpose that I felt now I begin to wonder, but God told me to go with B. What happened? Didn't I hear right? You heard right. So why are things turning out this way? Because B was in darkness. So God answered you from the place of darkness. So the Lord says, pray 
that the Lord should not answer you from the place of darkness. Because most times, as, as, as human beings, that's what we like. Now, I'm not necessarily going to say, God, give us darkness. No, no, no. But because we dwell in, in the region of darkness, most of the things in this world is in darkness. The political system in this world is all formulated in darkness, not the wisdom of God. I'm telling you the truth. So when it comes to things of election, it's all in the realm of darkness. Now, it takes going beyond the darkness to seek the mind of God. Now, when you seek the mind of God, you must seek the mind of God as though there is no election. Then you ask him, Lord, what's on your mind? And the Lord tells you what's on his mind. And then, then I'm not, this is where the problem is. So you look in the physical. You can't correlate. You can't say, oh, this is what is going to happen. Why? Because you are too used to, for example, what if the Lord tells you the person that will be president did not contest election? It's automatically you begin to think, hmm, okay, maybe the person God really had in mind did not contest. So, till next election. So, right now, God is going to let you to suffer till the next election. Now, I see your thoughts are in darkness. I want you to listen to me. Your thoughts are in darkness. Why? Because in that darkness, you have formed a route and, and, and a system that looks okay. So, election has already been done. There is no court or there is no law that will cause any intervention to happen now that will be legal. So, you begin to look at it and say, hmm, that means it's the next election. But this is the truth. When alignment takes place, because God has said at this time, now when God was speaking, remember the Bible said the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So God is not looking at 2023 and say, hmm, hmm, this, the people are like this. Mm, I think I know who to give them as president. No, sir. God had finished his work before the world began, before time started counting. God had finished his work. And God have established the things that will happen in 2023. See that now? So here is it now. And God has said, now there are times that darkness has his way. It, it looks like everything is just in darkness. And, and like God is quiet. Why is God not saying anything? He won't say anything. Why? Because he has already said what he has to say. In his saying, he has set the timing. I gave you an example of Egypt. God said they'll be there and they'll be tormented for 400 years. So if you like, cry in the 100th year, the, the 200th year, the 350th year. Cry. Tear yourself. God will be silent. Until when the time appointed came. Now, God had already spoken about that time before then. And here is the funny thing about it. Moses was raised in the palace. And then, it was as though they began to think, this one God spared Moses' life. There must be something great about him. And watch, Pharaoh trained him. He grew up in Pharaoh's house. He's treated as a prince. So God is planning a king for us in Moses. But then how is he going to do it? Maybe Moses is going to become Pharaoh. Yes, because when Moses becomes the Pharaoh, then it's so easy. He would free us. Oh, wow. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And while they were growing up and waiting for this to happen, uh, Moses made a mistake and he had to run from town. Think about what must have happened to all their hopes 
dashed. Why? The time was not right yet. Brothers and sisters, when the time came, now you see the method of God. You want to think, you want to be a counselor for God. You would say, Lord, but wouldn't it have been better that you would touch Pharaoh's heart? Moses would just go back to Egypt and apologize for the wrong that he did. And Pharaoh, be, yeah, Pharaoh would forgive him and make him, you know, maybe the, the prime minister like Joseph was. And give him such great position. And Moses negotiate the way of the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now you want to tell God that, I mean, there are peaceful ways to do these things. No, but God didn't choose that part. God came out of Zion and said, it is time. Moses, go to Pharaoh. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And that was all. No drama. No policy formation. No writing of documents. Go and tell Pharaoh he should let my people go. Brothers and sisters, when God rises up, he doesn't look at your calendar. He rises up because it has been written concerning that season. And in this month, God is rising up. And that's what he said here. He says, when he says you will rule in the midst of your enemies, he's saying you will rule in, in the midst of the people that never imagined that you had a chance, that never imagined that uh, you had what it takes. You know what I mean by that? And according to their system. And there are people God is raising in this season. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are in that season of alignment. And I told you, what God is doing now will beat the imagination of every human reason. Just believe Him. Listen, if you were giving up before, renew your hope now. Say, Father, I refuse to give up. I believe in you. Why? Because the Lord is releasing that scepter out of Zion. He's releasing the rod of his scepter. Now that's like thrusting it in. That's not negotiating. That's not, uh, no, 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 no. He's thrusting in that rod, that scepter. And what is he saying? Rule. In the midst. Now your foes are not in Zion. So he's saying, step out of Zion and rule in that place that they never imagined you could rule over them. So shall it be for your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.